सो वाइज अगर आप भी मॉक इंटरव्यू देना चाहते हैं तो वीडियो के डिस्क्रिप्शन में आपको एक लिंक मिलेगा जहाँ पे आपको गूगल फॉर्म को जाकर फिल करना है एंड आपका इंटरव्यू स्केड्यूल हो जाएगा एंड इसके अलावा अगर आपको कोई भी कोर्स जावा पाइथन जावा स्क्रिप्ट इसके अंदर अगर आपको कोई भी कोर्स देखना है तो प्लीज़ आप यूट्यूब पर जाकर ट्राई दे पर विजिट कर सकते हैं ओके एंड लेट्स ट्रैक टू द इंटरव्यू सो जस्ट टेल मी अबाउट योर पास्ट एक्सपीरियंस लाइक योर वर्क एक्सपीरियंस अबाउट योर सेल्फ Sure. So I'll give a brief introduction about myself. So I have completed my graduation in a bachelor's in computer application, and uh, starting from BC, I developed my interest in computer science. I always wanted to code. Prior, uh, currently I'm working as a full stack engineer at uh, Jobas.com. Prior to that, I was working as an intern with the server side team at Bobble, where I got to write some backend APIs. I got a gist of how the backend system works. But my inclination was towards frontend. So. Here at Jobas, I worked on system where we were delivering edtech products, mm-hmm. and we were supporting in-house infrastructures. So most of the work that I've done is in front end, and the back end languages that I've used, I worked on R PHP and GoLang. Okay, you worked on PHP and GoLang in a back end. Okay. Yes. So how much you rate yourself in JavaScript or React JS and React JS? Out so, of ten or out of five? Right. So if I'll talk about JavaScript. The JavaScript is pretty wide. I still get to learn a lot, lot of new things in in terms of syntactical sugars and writing syntaxes. So I'll rate myself around seven. Okay. And uh, same goes with the React. Yes, currently it is upgrading, and we are expecting a React 19 version at the end of this year. So I'll rate myself seven up in that also. Okay, you are uh, saying seven in both, right? Yeah. Okay. So we are also covered some HTML, CSS part in that interview. Okay, but later on. So we can start with JavaScript. Are you comfortable with that? With that? Yes, sir. Okay. So in JavaScript, is JavaScript single-threaded or multi-threaded? So JavaScript is a single-threaded uh, lang- programming language. It mm-hmm. doesn't support multi-threading. It but doesn't the, support multi-threading. Okay. So how we can, can achieve we, that? We have service workers. Okay. We have asynchronous programming web APIs, which we can take. Uh, utilize we can leverage those things to do multiple tasks like uh, uploading file and uh, handling multiple com- parallel computations with the help of service workers. So this is what we can leverage. So can you exa- uh, say about some examples about service workers? Service worker like if uh, I think I'll I'll take a very uh, common example. Like if I have to do some computation related to to file upload or scanning PDF. Hmm. So what I'll do is I'll I'll allot As soon as a file gets uploaded to my server, or as I get something on my front end, I'll I'll allocate a service worker. So in, what it will do, it will not uh, re- take my compute heavy resources and the tasks that I can do to read out of that file, to write on that file, hmm. can be uh, done by service worker. Okay. This. So set timeout and set interval. They are worked asynchronously or synchronously. So. Set timeout and set interval are the part of web API, hmm. browser web API, and they work asynchronously. Okay. So suppose if I run a thread, JavaScript a single threaded you as mentioned. Okay. So if I run a function in set timeout after five second. Okay. And I am calling ten functions before that. So as you mentioned, like if I am calling API in first three function and four function, it will take time. So of course, and the set timeout function will run after two or three second. So you are saying it will run parallelly, or is there any glitch between them? So they they what uh, JavaScript engine does is there is a macro queue and a micro queue. Okay. So uh, priority is given to the micro queue. Uh, set timeout comes under the macro queue. So uh, it, despite API is taking more time, they will be given priority. They will be get run first, but set timeout after them. So okay. macro queue and micro queue come into the picture okay. in asynchronous tasks. Okay. So let's talk about hoisting. Uh, what is hoisting in JavaScript? So hoisting is a phenomena. It's it's mm. a programming phenomena in JavaScript in which uh, what happens when execution context is created, uh, all the what JavaScript engine does it assign memory to all the variables. Okay. In terms of so what it does it will place placeholders. If the is it is a primitive value it will place undefined and if it, is it a like function it will keep that function definition as it is. And okay. in the uh execution phase it start running so hoisting happens because of this whenever you have declared a function and if you try to call it before declaring it it will still run 
ओके सो इज देर एनी वे हाउ वी कैन स्टॉप द होस्टिंग फिनोमिना इन जावा स्क्रिप्ट वी कैन यूज लेट एंड कॉन्स्ट इन डी एस सिक्स यू कैन यूज लेट एंड को फंक्शन बाई डिफॉल्ट आर होस्टेड यू कैन टेक एरो फंक्शन ओके सो बाय दिस वे यू कैन टेक कंट्रोल ओवर दैट ओके सो व्हाई वी आर यूजिंग यूज स्ट्रिक्ट इन जावा स्क्रिप्ट समटाइम वी एड यूज स्ट्रिक्ट ऑन द हेडर ऑफ जावा स्क्रिप्ट बिफोर रनिंग द स्क्रिप्ट सो जावा स्क्रिप्ट इज अ वेरी लूजली टाइप लाइक इट इट अलाउ यू टू डिक्लेअर वेरिएबल बट यू कैन नॉट डिफाइन इट्स टाइप ऑल ऑफ देम थिंग्स आर डन ड्यूरिंग द रन टाइम बट इफ यू वांट टू सेव योर time in terms of solving bugs and error if you want some strictness while mm-hmm. typing the code if you don't want undeclared or if you want a string to get assigned only string value use a number to get assigned only number value so this is what app can we do using use strict mode it allow it allows type checking kind of thing okay okay and uh, what is the difference between let where and const why we are developed let and const after where Yeah, so let and const were de- developed uh, in the ES6 when ES6 was introduced. Where was the prior to that? It was there before e- let and const. So mm. where was the we used where let and const to declare variables, mm. but they are different in terms of their scope and okay. how they perform in respect to their context. Is where is a globally declared variable? It will it has global scope, but l- later on it creates problem when you use it inside functions. You have to get specific constant. You have to use this. it creates a problem and writing code it become little tricky but with let and const they are block scope so what you can do is you can have a let declared mm. inside a function which cannot be exit out of the function but for the same variable if you mm. declared a variable with a var it can be out exit out at the function okay so this is, and const as the name suggests cannot be reinitialized you can change it but it cannot be reinitialized this is the major difference so you are saying we can change the value of const Yeah, like if you have const array, hmm. you cannot reassign it, but yes. you can change the values in the array. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So if there are any, uh, you are talking about arrays. So uh, can you please uh, give some uh, array methods if you know? Sure. Uh, map is what mostly hmm. we use. Map filter. We have reduce. We have sort to sort the array. Although we have to pass a custom function in that, we have uh, at index of find index. These mm. are the some. Uh, so what we can do is, if mm. I have an array initialized like a is equals to square bracket one two three four, I can reassign it a is equals to empty set of bracket. It will do the job. It okay. will empty the array. Okay. Okay. So okay, we have destructuring of array, right? What is that? Right. Destructuring is a syntactical sugar that mm. was introduced in ES six. What mm. we can do is, instead of uh, declaring multiple variables and then assigning value to them, we can. Uh, what we can do we can take out those value in a single line like okay. you have an object a b c d so you can what you can do is instead of taking every individual value in a separate variable constant you can just assign const curly bracket and the name of the keys that you want to get and it will do the job okay so it will work index wise or key wise like suppose if i don't want to declare the keys i just declare the variables and assign that to, to the array okay so how they will act, uh, automatically get the values So if you are destructuring an array, hmm. so it will take the the if you have if you are de- if you have if you have five elements in the array and you you are destructuring three elements at a time, so it will take first, second, third with the indexes respective index value. Respect index value. Okay, great. Okay, so Abhishek, uh, what is callback help? And what is the callback, callback function? Hell. Both. Right. So callback function is a way to. Perform a task after you have completed another task. Mm. If you you can pass a function inside a function, like we do in map filter, and uh, we talk about callback help. Callback help is a you know version of callbacks. Like calling multiple callbacks. When you do like uh, if you want to do multiple set timeout, you want to do like I have five tasks that I want to like if I'm making I'll, I'll take an example of tea making. Mm. So if I have to take the pan, light the gas stove. and do the other things so i have to do them task one by one okay so for that i'll write callbacks if i put the stove then only then i'll light the stove and then i'll pour some water i'll tea so writing this in a normal fashion way what happens becomes very lengthy and 
readability goes away of the okay. code so this is known as so javascript provides that functionality like you can do the things step by step first step will complete then second step then third step like that okay you have async await to you know yes. do the same thing but it's become more readable okay 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 so what are promises in javascript how they promises work? Hmm. at the objects which represent the eventual completion of an asynchronous task mm mm-hmm. so what happens like if you are calling doing any asynchronous task a very common example of fetching api okay. or using copy copy function of the window browser object it mm-hmm. returns a promise so you can what promise does you it 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 has the value either it get it get resolved or rejected so you can consume that promise with the help of dot then or await Okay what are the stages of promise there is a th- stages right in promise so yes. whenever you create a new promise uh, it, it 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 is initially it is in the pending state hmm. then it get fulfilled or rejected these are the three major state of a promise okay so abhishek what promise actually returns it uh, what data type it returns like boolean string what the pro- uh, what promise returns after promise, uh, uh, complete their function if you uh, fulfill you mentioned the stage yeah uh i have not uh, got a chance to exactly go through that t but i believe this promise is an object is a const- right. return i believe it promise return the object then you can check that what is the current stage and what's the value what's the data in the promise right okay no issue okay so uh, as we are talking about the promise what is the different between async and await or how we can use it both at a time so uh, like for the callbacks have we mm-hmm. have dot then method if you want to don't want to use dot then you can use async await but but what there is a basic uh, programmatical difference in that dot mm-hmm. then and async await what it does it it will not ensure the eventual completion you can use dot then in the two task but okay. like if i'm using a set timeout in one dot then and mm-hmm. another set time in and i have same timing so even though the shorter one is finished first mm-hmm. it will not get executed until the like or matlab in a very simple way i can say that mm-hmm. step by step doing work is achievable with async await but not with the dot then method there's a uh, this kind of a we can say with there's a glitch both are ways to consume promises dot okay. then and async await async await is a new syntactical way to handle promises but okay. uh, they have a mm-hmm. basic programming difference that you cannot control your steps with dot then mm-hmm. but you can with async await async await only will work once one of the task is complete then only the another await will work okay so as we are talking about async await there is a fetch api right in java site right. what they will do fetch is used to handle uh, calls if you want hmm. to po- make a post call or if you want to make a get call okay. it is provided by javascript itself browser it uh, takes a url hmm. and then you have get you get a response out of it fetch which is all the fetch also returns a promise so we handle it using await and then we hmm. convert that response to a json because okay. converting this json response also returns a promise then we can see it in the console okay so suppose is uh, there is any error in your api the api server returns the backend server of api returns the 500 and turns server error so how you will handle it so there when it will be in the response object Hmm. fetch api will return but we will not get confirmation whether the data was right or wrong so we hmm. will t- uh, take the response we have dot okay in the response object so we will check and we also have couple of more properties like status what was the status return of the api okay. so status i can code. De- yeah i have the re- complete rest object so i can hmm. check if it was okay or not okay property and what was the status why it whether it was a 200 or 400x or 500 server error okay so what if when you are calling the api okay with your code with your javascript code and the code has some problem or is there any thing with api which is uh, gone wrong then how you will handle it i believe with the try catch yeah if with I the try catch block to... you can handle it yeah right i just want to know that answer okay not an issue okay so okay let's talk about debounce uh, have you worked debounce. with on yeah what is debounce i have not implemented debouncing as well but mm. i know the concept around it it is like if you don't want to call or want to hit a resource on every input or a, or any kind of a change mm. if you want to save your bandwidth network bandwidth 
so that's what we do debouncing like uh, we we see on a very common example like on flipkart and uh, amazon there is a slight gap hmm. between two calls of them if you are searching a product it will it will give you a short span of time to write the entire name like one call and after there is a difference of like 200 300 milliseconds in between the calls this is a deep, this technique is called debouncing okay okay yeah good okay so there is a uh, after debounce okay so there is a thing like a course policy okay right. so sometimes user get course policy error in their browser or the javascript developer get their course policy error because user will not go to inspect element right so you guys go to inspect element check that so what's that error and how we can resolve it so course is a cross of uh, cross origin access policy if hmm. i'm uh, not wrong hmm. and what it does browser by default has a security that you cannot call a different server hmm. you cannot request resources from a different server you cannot hit to a different endpoint api until and unless you have specified it on the back end or on the front end like we have like an express or like in php we have x allow access headers we have to hmm. spec- mention that we have to provide the value that allowing these course error you the two different servers can uh, request resources in between them hmm. so by by providing these headers by using these headers which are uh, technical related like the, we have different kind of way to do it in express and mm-hmm. a different way to do it in php okay we can resolve this issue okay okay so let's talk about some more javascript question and uh, then we can then we will move to output based question okay right so okay so there is a uh, some uh, some es6 functions you know you can explain advanced javascript uh, functions right so like in es6 uh, there was a very we have arrow functions hmm. arrow functions were a very very important part of it and some newly introduced array methods was to be spliced the okay. original slice method used to hmm. mutate the original array but to be sliced we don't use it does not mutate the original array and hmm. uh, i'm uh, missing out on some right now <laughs> okay okay <laughs> no issue okay so i'm just uh, okay so let's uh, okay what is higher order functions higher order functions are a way where we can use functions as a variable which we hmm. can pass function like a parameter to a variable to a f- another function and we can also return a function from another function so this is what i have the functions are okay 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 so i think you have you also used double equal and triple equal right in javascript what is the difference between both of them so double equal is just for equality check but hmm. when you want to check also the type strict checking we call okay. it. we use triple equal when we are checking about the data type also right data type okay 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 so i am pasting a question okay and uh, you can open your vs code or if you have any uh, online compiler so you can share your screen sure sir yeah i hope my screen is visible yeah it's visible now okay so uh, abhishek i have pasted the function in a chat okay so what is the output of this function mm, so as i can see hmm. we have a variable x mm-hmm. which is assigned 10 mm-hmm. and we are calling a function test mm-hmm. and we are trying to log the value of x but we have already x which is assigned here is 10 mm-hmm. so what i think is happen that this let will shadow this variable Okay. and we will get we will get a console log 10 but mm. that console log i believe will be this one okay can you please run that program sure yeah let's see okay it's showing oh, undefined it. okay uh you got it the answer why it's showing undefined okay you are in starting you are talking about the scopes right yeah 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 so you can explain <coughs> we have a 10 here hmm. this this function will behave like a, either we are like a console log x will try to find x in this hmm. scope yes so it will get x where as 
but, but it's after declaring the console log right that is so why it's showing that fine yeah uh, right at the fine okay okay not an issue uh, okay i am sharing another question another question okay uh, you idea you have idea about closures yes sir. yeah what are they closures are a way with which a function remember its parent lexical environment mm-hmm. it remembers all the variables that was there in the parents context, uh, scope parent scope even after the execution okay even after the execution okay so i think you have not any problem with that question or answer it okay please check this sure yeah what is the output of this function have an outer function hmm. which is we are returning this inner function from it so console log x hmm. and x is 5 yeah right so what happen when we call this outer function hmm. this complete function will get assigned to inner okay and when inner is called hmm. this part of the block will run console log x will try to find uh, x hmm. but it is not here hmm. then it will go to its parent okay so and there it will find x hmm. so i believe this will print 5 yeah right so uh, please run this sure Yeah, your answer is correct. It will print the five as you mentioned. The what closer exactly work in the py, uh, JavaScript? Yeah, it will print five. Yeah, good, very good. Okay, so uh, there is a some uh, I will paste use of some syntax. Just need to explain how they will okay. work when we include this in JavaScript. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I am adding this. <coughs> okay, so there are two scripts. uh i have added in html browsing or you can say html code so there is a differ and async so how they will work with html input or output like so input output means like when we render the ui or the dom so how that javascript works right hmm. uh, both are the way to uh, are the way to fetch a uh, script script from the server hmm, right. but what happened that uh, after the script is fetched then the execution will start mm-hmm. and uh, in the you think i believe and in the defer what uh, uh, what happens is i'm actually getting confused because i know both of them works to fetch api but wo- once only work after the script is ha- has fetched and then execute execution will start mm. but in one of them what happens that if uh, script is fetched parallel execution will start as soon as the script is fetched it will start executing uh, parallelly and in one they one once the script is fetched only then after execution will start okay. so i believe uh, with the differ it will that and in async okay so what is better according to you when you have include some script in your uh, html so what is better or it's depend on the function calling which is defined in that script yeah there are a lot of things uh, mm. that goes like uh, obviously what kind of script and what is the execution of that script is hmm. but i i think i will choose a differ hmm. cuz once i'll have the complete script only then execution will start so it will handle all of the edge cases and i'll not run into some issues okay any kind of case but i think it will take load more load yeah. rather than async right yeah okay. yeah i have to do that trade off hmm. right so there is a way to uh, solve that loading problem right yeah okay so i'm pasting another question the last one okay so what is the output of this question this uh, console log sure uh, so here we have 0.1 which is being hmm. added to 0.2 hmm and please and ma- mention the types of that uh, data types of that value okay hmm. so we don't have any specific uh, strict data type in javascript for handling right. uh, floating value right so it will uh, be of type number hmm. and uh, this will be also so it will get added but hmm, i'm not sure how the precedence work in javascript hmm. if i'm uh, if i start uh, to calculate this function from uh, left to right hmm. 
so it will add it will add up to 0.3 and then it will strictly check whether these two values are of same type and they have same value hmm. right so i think it will uh, console log uh, true okay try to run this am if you want to make sure again so before run that so you can I'm also just not exactly this. sure about the president whether it will start from right to left so, uh, preceding you are not about uh, confirm about that I right see. okay yeah. just try to run this. but i'm taking uh, mm. a idea that it will start execution from uh, left to right mm -hmm. um, first this expression will get solved mm. and whatever the result we get here when it will get compared to this so i'll stick to my answer like okay okay let's see okay please run this it says false false okay so i am just explaining the reason because right. 0.1 and 0.2 according to our javascript standard will not return exactly 0.3 it will return 0.333 or something numbers oh, okay. okay that is why it is not the preceding issue it will uh, obviously calculate from left to right okay or the next level is board mass so we have not included the board mass rule here we are not included any square bracket or bracket here okay so about that there is a 0.1 and 0.2 will plus uh, add and the answer will be 0.3333 okay and when right. we have the triple equal to to compare that so it will compare exact value and also the data type of that value so that's right. why it is returning the false okay uh, okay yeah right yeah okay okay not, not an issue okay abhishek about that javascript uh, we have done Okay, let's move to React JS. You can stop your staring now. No issue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So why we are using the React JS? Or just uh, another question also, like what is React JS? Is it a library or a framework? So React JS is a lab, uh, JavaScript library. It is okay. used for uh, building UIs. Hmm. We it was developed by Meta, hmm. and uh, recently it has released version. we are expecting a version 19 out of it hmm. we use it to make it javascript uh, front end okay okay and uh, why we are using javas uh, react js over angular js so both of them works differently like hmm. uh, in angular you have two way bindings mm -hmm. there are its core set of features but react has like there are there are issues like you have to strictly use typescript mm. but you, that is not with the case react js you can also work with uh, typescript as well as javascript writing code becomes easier there are a lot of resources available documentation mm. is one of the few things which i believe is better in compared to angulars and uh, <clears throat> i'm not sure about the more technical points here why mm -hmm. uh, angular because both of them have their own set of features but one way winding of data and two way winding is something that i know that is this point of time that how data is being handled in both of them okay okay so there is a render function in javascript sorry in react js right, right. so how they work and what exactly they do so render function was a part of class based component hmm. it was used when functional component were not introduced okay it will only render class based components the render work only under class component right okay uh if for a functional component we use return hmm. we have states and other kind of thing but uh, for uh, if you want to use render method it will uh, have to declare a component as class based component it will extend react and if you have some state in them it will basically return the jx as written inside hmm. the render function and jsx will render by that render uh, function method right yeah. so it's not depend on class based but ha it is right like we are directly render the function with the render method in a class based component but when we are render the uh, functional component we are using the return and in that main application page yeah main.js or app.js which you are created with for the for the, for the home application okay home page for the application so they will rend, uh, render here okay okay let's uh, talk about jsx so what is jsx exactly and uh, full form of all for this also javascript uh, jsx stands for javascript xml it is a syntax in hmm. html like syntax mm -hmm. which we used in react to write uh, our uh, component it return so we use javascript in, in in with the help of j html so jsx is a syntax it's an ex javascript xml i believe and uh, we can write javascript along with html 
okay so but uh, we are we can also write in a html also like uh, we can write on click method and then we can write the javascript function so what's the difference between them so like uh, how react handles hmm. its components is different okay uh, these all events are being handled so like synthetic synthetic events react mm-hmm. have its own set of wrapper over the events okay. like you can call raw javascript function it mm-hmm. allows you okay but as uh, apart from writing that react gives you a style of writing things it has its own way of writing things so okay. we can use direct javascript method but uh, it will might it might not affect or work as expected because react have its own way of doing things okay. like if you are using on click another mm-hmm. event handler okay so there is a two or more than two maybe the ways of saving the file in react js application with the different extensions right we use a dot js dot jsxx dot jsx is there any different difference between them or it will work uh, normally what they are you can use if you are not using explicitly type script you can mm-hmm. save your component with dot js or jsx what okay. jsx does it give you intellisense auto completion mm-hmm. okay. of the text okay so okay let's talk about the hooks in react js right. okay so what the uh, use of use effect so for handling uh, we cannot declare a direct variable in react mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. react does reconciliation and it needs to know what variable gets changed so mm-hmm. we use use effect there if you want to have any kind of variable in react application we use use state sorry use effect i said use okay. state hmm. for that and yes. it use state gives us returns uh, array that we can destructure it gives you a variable and a set function setter hmm. function which hmm. you can use to manipulate the state value okay and use of use effect use of use effect uh, it is used to handle tasks which are out of the scope of react like hmm. calling talking to local storage calling an api handling these kind of things hmm. which what uh, i am missing the term what we call side effects yes side effect for handling side effect we use hmm. uh, use effect hook okay okay so is there any way like we can define the use effect without any condition or without any dependency yes uh, use effect uh, what use effect function does it you it it, it has a dependency array hmm. so it's optional but what that will do it hmm. will The, every time your application will render that use effect will call itself it will run first so it might can uh, create problem of memory leakage mm-hmm. and might blot the memory might con- fully consume the memory okay so you can use it but it is not a, a standard convention to use it without a dependency array okay so suppose like we have use effect array okay and okay. we want to call an api Right. Right. So, how, like, what is the structure you can type in your screen? I'll, I'll try to type it in the comment box. Ha, please. Like, how we can just a simple uh, API calling function, and j- you are just about to call that in a use effect when we okay. render the or load the page on browser. So, I'm writing that syntax. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is will be the syntax. Uh, hmm. I'll what I'll do is I'll just change it little bit. I'll inside that uh, use effect callback function. Hmm. I'll call my API here, basically. Okay. What I will be the function will be to handle my API call, or I can write it directly in the use effect. Okay. Okay. And suppose if you want to define that call API upon the condition. like uh, there is a stage we have uh, state we have defined the state value when it's change to true then i need to call the api so how so can i, I modify can... that array that uh, use uh, effect thing yeah so i'll take the same use effect and i'll mm-hmm. pass that state value for now as i like i'll take an example of uh, mm-hmm. loading a uh, mm-hmm. pagination very common example yeah only if if page changes or a state, state variable changes only then another call will happen Mm-hmm. So I'll pass that uh, variable inside the my use effect array. Mm-hmm. So 
sorry for the spelling <laughs> yeah, yeah, no a bad issue. with the spelling no issue, so no issue. whenever this variable will change hmm. this use effect will to recall the api yeah okay about the spelling javascript will correct you if there any variable mm-hmm. name missing okay you can write variable as a very uh, this spelling there is no issue but you need to create or uh, add the state with this variable name only this yeah, is right, right. yeah there is no any spelling issue in that uh, uh, javascript or any programming language you declare the variable name it is okay okay no issue okay let's talk about the states so why we are using the state over javascript variables because we have let where const already we have also array object there is a multi uh, data type we have okay and there is also there is a no restriction of use that data type to any of value right so why we have states uh, that uh, because of the something there is a react has reconciliation hmm. react has its own way of observing the variables mm-hmm. if you react will not throw any error if you will use your normal javascript like syntax a javascript variable but mm. it will not it will not get an idea if that variable has changed and then to render it accordingly okay so that is why we can because of the reconciliation process it the normal javascript variable will not trigger the reconciliation process mm. that why it is not recommend to use a normal javascript functions okay data types sorry data types yeah right so uh Uh, it's the reason okay that's good so what is the st- syntax of state and what's exactly that it is a object or array what's that so because it's state, a construct of construct of two or th- more things right yeah so i'll try to write that hmm uh data from a data so suppose you want to create an incremental counter and uh, uh you need to define the state for that first state for it, state for that so what i can do you state mm. is a function mm. it returns us an array with mm. two things mm. uh which first is the actual value that mm. we will say or uh, use and mm. another is a set set function setter function you can say which okay. will be used to change that value mm. and uh, here we can pass uh, and you can pass an initial value to use state mm-hmm. so it will know how to you know use that so here i have written a syntax mm-hmm. so i have already assigned that one to this data variable mm-hmm. so initially data it will be equal to 1 and uh, i can change or increment decrement this value with the help of set i have okay. to write data okay, okay set data function yeah abhishek you need to work on spellings too <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> definitely definitely yes it's now calling set spelling. date so the mis- uh, spelling mistake is okay but when you are writing a spelling which is make the different meaning of that so that will confuse the person okay right. okay not an issue okay so this is the way to create a state okay right yeah right so if i want to change that state of that variable okay so how can i change that we can use set date or sorry set data function on click of any button so it will work yeah it will it will work you mm. if i try to write on the syntax mm-hmm. you can call uh, on click and mm-hmm. you can pass that uh, a callback function to that on click mm-hmm. and you can change uh, set data there it you either you can increment or decrement accordingly okay so i have shared the same uh, line is you have shared with the different data type it will work okay yeah let will work there won't be any problem okay so Just what's the difference between them why we have not using let because have you read any library of react js or examples or any code they will by default use the const variable they are not changing the let or where or something so why because Mm-hmm. we have to do we don't want our data to get reinitialized let with that let it will happen like if some intern mm-hmm. or some by by mistakenly mm-hmm. we are using this data variable a lot of at, at a lot of places in our mm-hmm. application a very very application but by mistake if someone rewrites it or reassigns it it will hand, hamper the entire application so yeah. to avoid that you can mutate that value but you we don't want to re initialize it yeah right that is the reason so that's, that's why we can't use let in that yeah okay okay so okay let's uh, talk about the components right so 
about the components we have like functional component class component you have already mentioned okay so what is the life cycle of that like uh, there is a life cycle of particular component right we need to um, get the data add the data fetch the fetch things so like what is the complete life cycle of any class component functional component you can explain so life cycle method are majorly part of uh, class based component mm. uh, it component used to get mount mm. it used to get updated and the component used to get it will unmount so these were the three majorly uh, life cycle methods mm -hmm. and uh, what kind of changes we want to do on our application on our single page application it mm. was defined in inside this life cycle okay. so like for the component will unmount was something that we use with the use effect return function when your component is unmounting what do you want Mm -hmm. If you have some event listeners attached, you want to remove that to save memory. Mm -hmm. And what happens when your component mounts? So, three lifecycle methods were there to handle different stages of your application. Mm -hmm. What to do when kind of thing. Okay, okay. So there is a props in React JS, right? Right. Okay. So can we change the value of props? Prop. It is a way to pass data mm -hmm. and. Uh, as react is a unit in react direction data flows in a unidirectional way hmm. so from parent to child yeah right so if data which you have passed from parent to child you can change it in the child component but yeah. vice versa is not true you can uh, directly yeah. there's a way to change it but hmm. you cannot directly mutate the parents value parents props or a parents value okay. prop is just a uh, value you can change it right okay so is there any uh, way to change that child to parent or what is prop drilling if you can mention so hmm. prop drilling is something when you have multiple components are uh, like a parent parent component then hmm. followed by a parent component and then you have child component so if you want to send something from your grand parent to a sub to a child hmm. so you have to pass data from each component one by one from grand parent to parent and then to child okay that's the prop drilling right. thing that's right. prop drilling okay. but if you want to change data from grandparent hmm. or data from a child component to a grandparent grandparent right you have to lift that state up yeah so this is a way lifting the state up is a, a way in hmm. which we can do that okay is there any way to avoid the prop drilling thing uh, there are now multiple way hmm. the react gives you an option to use context api you can use a third party library react redux we have just mm. end okay to uh, to have a centralized storage a single source of truth which is commonly in context of react we can use that okay okay so like there is a context api you mentioned okay right so is there any hook to maintain that context api mm, we have uh, use context and use provider majorly mm. use provider is something which we tell our application that we have made a store mm -hmm. you will act, we will give all data mm -hmm. to our complete app and use context we can use where we want to use that data okay from okay. that uh, store okay okay and uh, what is event propagation event propagation is uh, it is a phenomenon in javascript whenever mm. you click to whenever a event happens on any of the element it mm. propagates it goes to, it also get adjusted to its parent and also register to its grandparent okay so this is event propagation okay, okay. so uh, abhishek suppose i want to get the data of any html tag in react js right so what is the syntax for that uh, i can use use ref hmm uh, what I can do, use ref has a property current. What is use ref actually? It's a, use ref is a hook which is provided by a React. Like mm. we have document dot get element by ID in yeah. JavaScript, normal in JavaScript, JavaScript, but right. we don't have something like in React. So document dot get element by ID or tag name is equivalent of using React. Ref, sorry, ref. using uh, use ref. You can uh, initialize use ref to none and they can set a reference to any of the input. And then reference variable will have it is an object which has current value. So with the help of that current, of you can get the value or you can mm. change anything, any style, or you have to get the value. You can use it. Okay. So uh, like there is a uh, actually the based on virtual DOM portion. Okay. So why we are manipulating virtual DOM or using virtual DOM with the React JS? Because we can change the UI 
on the web page without refreshing the page with the ajax and jquery right right jquery is a li- also a library of javascript which is written on javascript right so why we are using react over jquery and ajax so what happens when you have a very big application if you mm-hmm. talk in the context of flipkart or amazon it is a mm-hmm. very big application you have some very deep lying nested component so whenever you will try to change one component your entire application gets refreshed you it it the the painting part the re, repaint of the application is happen mm-hmm. so to optimize to avoid this uh, computation what i can say react developers came with the idea of having a virtual dom and mm-hmm. to only change what what node element or what dom element needs to be changed uh, jitna zarurat like kind of thing mm-hmm. what needs to be get changed only gets changed and none of them test others no need to re-render or repaint on the browser okay so virtual dom uh, how will uh, how much time it, it will take to impact on real dom like there is a we are maintaining the virtual dom and real dom both in the application in the react application also so how it will impact to the real dom well i believe they are using some kind of a graph uh, mm-hmm. implementation i'm not sure about uh, the actual implementation i'm missing the name right mm-hmm. but it is based on a graph and it takes like o of n cube time complexity okay but there are a lot of optimization techniques in between so it get refreshed very quickly okay okay user don't get a chance to see whether it is a loading or a hampering it gets changed very quickly in a in a way to change the real dom right okay so there is a testing also like uh, test cases we can write in javascript right or oh, sorry react js and javascript both so is there any library library you used for that i am uh, uh, still not uh, got a chance to write a in actual test cases but i i know that uh, we use jest for javascript we okay. have mocha for javascript but in react we have react testing library mm-hmm. where we can uh, test the components whether it is loading correctly uh, the styles are okay or not the input and the buttons element are working as expected they are changing the dom okay. we can uh, mock that okay so abhishek there is a higher order function and pure functions right yeah what's the difference between them and is there any example you can give sure hmm. so uh, pure and impure functions I'll, I'll i'll give an example pure functions hmm. are something which hmm. give on given if you give them a set of inputs it will always return the same value like if i have a function to calculate sum hmm. of two values if i'll pass the same argument to a like i have a sum function which takes two argument a and b mm-hmm. and it returns the sum of that so like i have i am passing 2 and 2 for both values it will always return 4 to me so this is an example of pure, pure function but if i have a function which gives me a random number if i'm using mat dot uh, random mm-hmm. so this is a function is an impure function cuz every time it will be get called it will give me some different value okay okay this is the nature of function yeah these right. are kind of, uh, pro functions and imp- okay and uh, what is higher order functions higher order functions the uh, same thing when you have when you are passing a mm-hmm. function to another function and you are trying or uh, returning a function from another function mm-hmm. like map is a higher order function it takes a callback function and you can also use like you can combine some method which will manipulate the string like i i can create a function which takes a function hmm and okay. it will return me a func so it is look uh, you don't need think any thing like uh, it's looks like closure thing like we are also defining the function into the function and they will get the value of that so it is look like that same right which are higher order functions okay okay there is a controlled function also right i have not uh, heard uh, heard of the controlled functions okay so there is a control functions in react js actually controlled and uncontrolled both of functions okay so okay we will talk uh, about this no issue yeah okay so let's move to the other question like in a react js if you want to load any application oh sorry any api okay so for the api what you will use the fetch or you will use any third party library to load an api i can use xuse uh, okay the writing the syntax is little bit easier but mm-hmm. if i don't want any dependency on any third party library right so i can use the uh, async await and the fetch function yeah by that you can also call the api okay right. so xuse xuse always return promise 
uh, I have not exactly worked with the XUs. XUs hmm. not written the problem. It returns you the complete data hmm. from what I have uh, observed, it, and then you can directly use that uh, data object. Okay, so that means if you want to return the promise from the API call or from the function, so you need to use the async await and um, fetch function, right? right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's write that. Okay. So there is a two different types of read or you can say list the uh, API data. Like if it's an array, there is a map or for each. What's the difference between them? So both of them are a higher order functions, hmm. and uh, we use them to render the list but map is mostly used both of them were introduced in es6 hmm. you can uh, use map but what you cannot control uh, for each you hmm. cannot control for each once it has initialized or start iterating over an array it will completely iterate but the same is not true with the map you have a little control over the map yes that's an example that's an example of controlled and uncontrolled functions uh, okay, right. Yeah, right. You just right. mentioned this is controlled and this is uncontrolled, right? Okay. So, okay. What is the key in React? So we use we pass uh, pass a prop like if you are rendering a list of items in your DOM hmm. on on your application. So mm -hmm. whenever one of them will change, uh, key is a way to tell React. React keep a track of all the items. If you will not hmm. pass the key prop to the item, React will not know or it will get confused. What needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. So key is a way to keep a track of the data. React uses it internally to keep track of the data. Okay. That's the working of key, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm, okay. So what is the click jacking in the JavaScript? So click jacking uh, is a term mm -hmm. which is uh, referred to uh, hijackers. It is used trying to breach the application by uh, making any fake input or button mm. over your applications button. So mm -hmm. click jacking is this uh, technique of hacking or getting malicious, putting malicious code on the user interface. It's okay. part of a web security. Okay. Okay. So suppose Abhishek, there is an application you have created with react and uh, it will take a lots of like a library load or any other load on loading the application, right? So how you will imp uh, optimize that? So if my application is very uh, resource heavy in terms of images, mm -hmm. I'll try to get the images from CDN. Mm -hmm. it, so I can use some caching techniques okay. to minimize the resource load or to mm -hmm. minimize the network calls. Okay. Most. So I'll use caching, I'll use CDN mm -hmm. on the front end to minimize the time in which okay. application gets load. Okay. So is there any possible chance like uh, when you create an application, okay, with React.js and uh, you want to store their data while they have just launched and you want to get the user data like location, right? And uh, their city, like in the, this is a part of also a location and there's IP address, there's a Mac address. So how you will do it? Is there any way to get it in the JavaScript or React.js? Well, we have geolocation API, geo mm. APIs in JavaScript, but uh, we need to get users permission, user consent. Mm. Uh, we get a small prop of that the application wants to lower your location, mm. wants to access your mic or any other uh, hardware. So with the help of geo API, mm. geolocation API, we can do that. Okay. And for the IP address or MAC address of device? Uh, I'm not sure about that, but mm. I believe there's a, there, there is a way. Hmm. There are methods because to do that. this is required for a application which is a big application then the user wants uh, by which server my application is loaded access like it is not about the flipkart or any amazon thing because they are about the customer reach okay but when there is a software or any kind of cms and crm so they will need the location and also that mac address and ip address so that's required for that okay okay not an issue Okay, Akshay, that's from my side. Is there any question you want to ask? Uh, thank you for calling me out uh, mm. for this, mm -hmm. giving me this opportunity to appear mm -hmm. in the mock interview. And uh, I would love to know your experience mm -hmm. up, uh, at your current con company and uh, how you grow. There's a story behind and mm -hmm. I read that story of yours from being yeah, 
gone on a long track of journey in a software journey so if you would like to share some tips for me yeah okay so about that javascript i can say like uh, it's very good you are in javascript yeah? and you need to explore in the advanced javascript things like array restructuring you can use okay and there is a arrow function anonymous function you can try or practice more with that coding questions okay and also when it's about the core concepts of javascript right so how they will work what is the exact return types and what is the value we can we have when we add some values like we can use any two fixed function or any values to get the uh, needful output okay that is about the javascript thing and about the react you are good at it and but there is a suggestion need to explore more libraries you can use axios and more libraries you can include in your uh, application and if, as i ask about the jest api you can also include the jest test case library because it's required for a uh, mnc company and the big companies right so this is they are the thing like there is a test coverage when you run your application in your github any system version control thing so they are required the test case coverage for that function you have write in your javascript code or in a react js application yeah that's from right. my side Thank you sir